Welcome back. There's a new version 094 of Agent Zero being released today. It contains quite a lot of updates, mostly about connectivity, UI, and user experience. So let's get right into it. If this is your first time with Agent Zero, you can see our GitHub page. It contains installation manual, development manual, and a lot of other useful information. And also on this YouTube channel, you can see video tutorials for installation developers guide and others. More information can be found on our website, agent-0.ai. You can learn more about the project and its features. And you can learn more about our AOT token and the community platform utilizing the token. Here you can see post and upvote improvement proposals, helping us steer the development of Agent Zero. If you like what we built, you can join our school and Discord community. You can also join us on our weekly community calls. Now let's see the updates. The first one is we have a new set of external API endpoints for Agent Zero. You can find these in the settings, external services, external API, and show API examples. And here you can see descriptions and examples of various API endpoints exposed by Agent Zero. These can be used by external applications. If you're developing an app, you would like to use Agent Zero as a tool you can now connect to Agent Zero using these simple endpoints. They support sending messages, starting new chats, continuing previous chats, resetting chats. They also support attachment, etc. And they are protected by an API key. The API key is also described here. And the token is based on your username and password you use to authenticate into the web UI of Agent Zero. When you change your username or password, the token will automatically regenerate, making all the previous connections obsolete. We use the same authentication system for MCPs and A2As as well, where the token is part of the URL. Second update is that the MCP server exposed by Agent Zero now supports streamable HTTP. In settings, MCP A2A, Agent Zero MCP server, has to be turned on. And here in connection example, I can see connection strings for both server-side events and streamable HTTP. Now I can provide my connection details to Windsor, for example, and tell it, say hi to Agent Zero. And this is an actual response from Agent Zero for my Windsurf. Third big addition to connectivity is full implementation of agent-to-agent -agent protocol in Agent Zero, both as a server as well as a client. Again, in settings, MCP A2A, you just need to enable Agent Zero A2A server, and you can see the connection example string. This is the URL the A2A interface for Agent Zero is exposed on. And Agent Zero has a new native tool for A2A communication so that Agent Zero is able to call other A2A agents over the internet. This way I can let Agent Zero talk to itself when I say, say hi to this A2A agent, giving it the local host address. And Agent Zero should be able to call itself and get a response. Now one big change in the UI is a new notification system. And these notifications can be triggered by the front end as well as the back end or by the agent itself. So now Agent Zero is sending me a few example notifications of various types. And I can see all the notifications I have missed here. This makes the UI of Agent Zero more flexible, giving us the option to send notifications from backend when something happens, or giving the agent the option to notify the user when it's running, for example, in the background using tasks. In the future, notifications might be extended with event handlers, for example, sending you emails when an error happens, etc. Next improvement is new local terminal interface. Let me explain. Previously, Agent Zero used SSH to connect to its terminal. Even when it was running locally inside the Docker container, it used SSH pointed to localhost to connect to the terminal session. Some users report problems with SSH, like disconnect, so we developed a brand new local terminal interface in Python that connects directly to the bash process. 
This is now the new default option for the Christ instances of Agent0, but you can still switch to SSH if you need to. If you run Agent0 in a development environment, this is for example running in my Windsurf, SSH means that it will be connecting remotely to my Dockerized instance on this URL and this SSH port. Local Python interface in development environment means it will be executing commands directly on my host machine, which is not recommended but might be useful for debugging. Next one is the rate limiter being integrated directly to our model interfaces. Rate limiter settings are very useful when you use free models, for example, where your quota is limited to a certain number of requests per limit or tokens per limit. You can set these limits in your model settings, agent settings, chat model, utility model, and web browser model. And agent zero will then wait when it's getting close to hitting these limits. So you don't get API errors from the provider, but the framework will wait the time needed for the next request. This feature worked already in Agent0 for chat and utility model, but was ignored by the web browser model in browser use framework. Now, because the rate limiter is integrated into the model interface class itself that we pass to browser use, it is respected by browser use as well. And even the web browser agent will wait before it hits rate limit. Next is delayed memory recall. In standard mode, when you send Agent0 a message, the first thing that happens is that the system searches for memories to make the response more relevant based on memories or the path the agent takes um, more relevant. This way, Agent0 learns over time and becomes more efficient over time. Here we can see it's searching for memories and now it's starting to generate the response. But based on the size of the memory database of Agent0, and the utility model you use, for example, if you use local models with Olama, there are multiple utility LLM calls going on. So this can become slow and you can wait multiple seconds before Agent0 starts responding. So for this reason, there's a new option in agent settings, in memory settings, memory auto recall delayed. When you enable the switch, the agent will no longer wait for the response from the memory system it will get the memory injection in the next turn. So it will do the first response or it will use the first tool without having the system prompt injected by relevant memories. It can still do a manual memory fetch if it needs to. If you ask something specific that the agent knows can be found in the memory, it will do a manual memory search. But for most tasks, it will just skip the first wait and continue with the task. A little example here. You can see the agent starts responding right away. For this task, it didn't even need memory, which might be the majority of tasks or it might not. We don't know yet. That's why this feature is not turned on by default. You can experiment with it and share your experience. By the way, the agent knows that the memory is being delayed. It gets this message instead of the first memory fetch. So, it can decide whether it needs to use a manual memory fetch or not. Next, we have a set of UI UX improvements. The first is smarter auto-scrolling in UI. This means when the, out, when the agent or a tool generates a long output, you don't have to fight the scroller. It behaves naturally. When you're near the bottom, it scrolls automatically. When you scroll up, it stops and generates the rest of the text. This goes for any part of any message, like here, the reasoning part of the generating message by the agent, as well as for code output, which is probably the most common scenario. So now you don't have to fight the scroll and everything feels natural. Then we have new action buttons in messages. And those are these two buttons, copy and play, that appear when you hover over any message or part of message. They allow you to copy the content of the full message or the respective part of the message. This way you can also trigger the text-to-speech even though it's disabled by default for new messages. Okay, the user wants me to do a long reasoning about life. And they work fine even with nested scrolling like this. Next is support for multiple API keys for a single provider. In settings, external services, where you fill out your API keys. Now in a single field, you can set multiple API keys separated by commas as described here. 
and the system will rotate them every request. So if you have multiple keys you wish to use at the same time, you can do so like this. A QR code is now shown next to the tunnel URL when you start a public tunnel. Maybe you didn't know in Agent Zero settings external services, you can create a Cloudflare or Servio tunnel. Just by clicking this button, your Agent Zero instance will be exposed on a public URL so you can access it over the internet from your cell phone, for example. Now to make it easier, we added a QR code so you can just scan the code and open the URL on your mobile device. The last update is proper download streaming from the UI, meaning when you download a large file, it is properly streamed, saving resources on the back end and showing you the progress on the front end. And lastly, as always, some fixes and optimizations have been added to this release. All right, that's it for this release. While 094 was in testing, we already started working on 095. There will probably be just two or three updates in 095, but those will be really major ones, so you definitely don't want to miss these out. As always, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your subscription, for your GitHub stars. Thank you for being part of our community and see you next time.